officially underway. Got the car loaded. Ended up going through the drive-thru, meeting kids. And we're on our way to Grand Rapids to finalize Alicia's adoption. Woohoo! What's up, Instagram? Team Aaron driving across the High Five State. Final court finalization hearing for Alicia Hope's adoption. Pulled the kids out of school, making it a family day. Running behind when you got five kids. We wanted to go to Culver's for lunch. We had to do the drive through and our drive through guy at Culver's thought he was a radio DJ. It was very obnoxious. Would you like a cheese on your cheese burger? Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. It was crazy. We made it. We're here. Now I'm a busted. We told the kids they should be well behaved because the juvenile detention center is right here. And so we warned Seth that he would be put in jail if he messes up. Seth, what is in front Mark of you there? Seth, what is that in front of you? We are going oh. Sunday what is that? At least that was oh the last is it turned on? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Would they go any other way? I did not do that on purpose. Um, I'm just here representing the agency um, on behalf of their caseworker who's also in Saginaw. Um, from all of the reports I've read and the documentation we have, we are recommending finalization. Um, and we had the joy of working with this family through the agency um, numerous times now. So. All at once. <laughs> Jonathan, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, it's uh, Thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. And thank you for um, your grace with the other <laughs> kiddos. It's good stuff. They, they are very excited to be here. And we told them that the juvenile detention is right next door. <laughs> so they act up. Amber, is there anything you'd like to say? No idea <laughs> at that point in time that she was actually already on the way and that she was going to be joining our family and we would have the opportunity to keep them connected biologically and in an, in an adopted home. So it's just been it's such an unexpected blessing and an honor to be able to have Alicia permanently join our family and her brother. Yeah. Cool. So who do we have here today with you? We have um, our friends Karen and Eric, Mimi, and then our friends Keisha and Ian Clyda. Alright, so they're friends from Saginaw, from the church? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright, um, well this is, I love doing these, I already said that, so you guys know that. But it's kind of an interesting um, progression. So when I first became a judge, you don't have to do it. I kind of information on the record. They can send paperwork in, and the kind of judge can sign you up to do it. And uh, we're fairly busy. So I remember the first couple I saw on my calendar, I went, why do these people need to come in for a court hearing to have their adoption confirmed? And then after like two of them, I went, I'm so glad. Everybody, I hope everybody comes in and does an adoption confirmation because a lot of my job has to do with the, the other end of things. That doesn't. It's always great. I always love doing this for multiple reasons. And one of the reasons is it is intuitive to understand why a child needs an adoptive family. So when I do adoption conservation, that, that part of it is natural for me to understand. What I did not understand before I started presiding is the benefit that the adopting family, especially the parents, feel. So I get the opportunity to look at the faces of adopting parents. And it's like these two faces right here. They're, 
they're smiling at their kids at Christmas, you know, and it's like this is what they want to do, and they want to be responsible for this child in addition to their other children, and that's part of the completion of their family. And I didn't get that before until I got a chance to preside on these hearings and see these faces, read the materials, and go, holy cow, these people are going to get it, and they're, they're into it, and they're completing their family today. So, uh, that's one of the reasons I like it. I almost always have people here supporting adopting families. So um, I look at our community more globally, and you're part of my community, even though I live on the other side of the state. It's really not that far away. So uh, I think that Michigan is a great state. I think that where I live over here is a great place to live. I don't think Saginaw is a bad place to live. But what this reminds me of always is the strength of our community. And your community, you got people here driving all the way across the state to support you and your new child, and people need that. You need to have a community, you need to have people who will support you and what you do, and your children need to know that there's other people supporting you. So every time I do an adoption confirmation, it reminds me of the strength of our community and, and your community, and that these, this child is being put into a community that has numbers and strength and support. So that makes me feel better as well. It makes me feel good about our state and our community. Another thing that you said, you're talking about the blessing, and this is one thing that uh, I think I'm certain that there are a lot of people in our community that do not understand what you said, the implication of that. So in an adoption situation, particularly in your case, I'm mean not the brother. So there's a need out there, and you guys are aware of the need. Uh, but then you raise your hand and the need gets fulfilled, and how does that happen? How does a child from one household in one community wind up back and what we do? Even though the Court of Appeals are probably telling me I can't say that. <laughs> but it's like when I preside at these things, you look at it and go, how can it not be? Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, I like to share with people, uh, this is an order of adoption. I like to share the significance of this to me because I think some people don't fully appreciate the significance of what has transpired here today. It is as if today we are at, uh, what's the hospital I'm saying? Uh, Covenant. Covenant Hospital. You're at Covenant Hospital and you're looking in the nursery and you're looking at a bassinet and you're saying, that's my hair's new baby right there. Mm -hmm. All right? That's what's happening today, legally. This is what is happening. So I like to go to the order of adoption and talk about uh, what all these findings mean and why they're so significant. The first finding is that a petition for an order of adoption has been filed. What that means is I have a couple that recognizes the need for adoptive placement for children. They've raised their hand and said, Judge, we want you to consider us to be an adoptive placement for this child. That is not for everybody, for sure. And special people recognize the need and raise their hands and go through everything they need to to get here today. So I respect people that recognize the need and raise their hands. The second finding the court makes is that all necessary orders terminating parental rights have been entered. What that means is legally I have an orphan in our greater community. So there's no one legally responsible to, to care for that child at that time. So what happens in a case like this as an adoption agency takes over, and the court actually is responsible for the orders and ensure the care of the child, and the adoption agency is delegated to do that for the court during the pendency of this case. So, in that process, three is a finding that the adoptee was made a ward of, was made a ward of the court. That is how our system assures proper care of the child during the pendency of an adoption request. It's part of why I love my job because it ensures that I have an opportunity to work, look out for the welfare of children, but it's not ideal for them on the long run, and we all know that. That's why the adoption is so important. The fourth finding that the court makes is uh, kind of long, and what it really means is that the uh, health remedies of the parents have been exhausted. And the reason that has been put in is because uh, several years ago there was an adoption and went all the way through, but the father's rights had never been adequately addressed at the trial court, so the adoption actually got undone and then to start over from square one. So now the Supreme Court has said that uh, the caseworkers and the uh, court personnel have got to check the appellate records to make sure that the time period has expired and there's no adoptions pending, or no appeals pending. 
The first finding the court makes is that the adoption of the adoptee by the petitioners is desirable and in the best interest of the adoptee. So the two of you have had your home inspected, your financial resources have been evaluated, your employment history has been evaluated, you get letters of recommendation, you have friends that report to the caseworkers, uh, your criminal histories have been checked. To you, it seems like it goes on and on. Actually, it might have been a little faster this time because you had done it recently <laughs> before. But that investigation and, and all of that is so that I can make that finding. I can uh, take advantage of looking at the materials, read about your history and your home, and make that finding that this adoption uh, by the petitioners is desirable and in the best interest of the adoptee. Um, and I was really, I was really impressed when I read the information that was submitted on your behalf. I think you guys are great. I think the world of you folks, I think your family looks like it's adorable and awesome. So uh, the real reason you're here is what I order here at the bottom. It is ordered from and after this day. The parents of the adoptee are Jonathan David Heron and Amber Lee Heron. The name of the adoptee is Alyssa Hope Heron. Is it, is it Alyssa or Alyssa? Alicia. Alicia? Okay, Alicia Hope Heron. And the adoptee, if awarded this court is this if awarded this court, is discharged with great confidence and respect and appreciation that I will sign that order and congratulate everybody involved. So it's official. So um, I have an unwritten rule, and that is that everybody who's here today has to be in a picture, okay? Yeah, you have to be there. You thought when you walked in that the deputy was out there to protect us. He was there to drag you back in if you try to escape. Without <laughs> but seriously, this is a, an important day. It's like a, a day at the nursery. And I think it's really good to commemorate who's here to support the family and the child on this day, which is like a birthday for the child. So I would like you all to participate in the picture. So I think the caseworker can help. If we can't find anybody but the clerks, I are now used to being told that they're coming from ask. They're coming and take some pictures, okay? So I'm gonna take the file and give it to the clerk and they'll work their magic and you may take pictures all over the court, okay? Any questions? Um, Your Honor, children want to know if they can use the hammer. Uh, it's a gavel, all right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, there's a gavel up here, all right? Here's a block of wood and you can do it. It's not real strong, it's more decorative than effective, but you can all do that. And if you hit the computer equipment, I'll get in trouble, okay? So <laughs> stay away from the computer equipment, but you better get to use the hammer. <laughs> all right, we are adjourned. I think you guys should all come up here. Judge Levi tells her. Order, order, order. Order in the court. Order in the court. Congratulations, sweetheart. You are being adopted into a great family. And I'm sure that they are going to take good care of you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. What do we got? We got the ribeye steak. And you're washing it down with chocolate milk. That's a man right there. All right.